Welcome to Hustle System. My name is Mikhail and I help people master their mindset, build a better business, and help you live your life on your terms. In this video, we're gonna be talking about the three steps to a funnel that every single funnel needs to have and how to think about it. Before we dig in, please click the subscribe button down below so you can be notified when I upload more videos or click the notification bell if you've already subscribed but have not clicked it yet. So let's dig right on in. Those of you guys that follow my stuff already know I do internet marketing, digital marketing, and there are these things called funnels, which is what we use to drive sales, make money, all that good stuff. So in this video, we're going to talk about the three points that every single funnel needs to have in order to actually work. And there's a little bit of a wild card in here because when most marketers think about results, it's almost always on the front end, right? It's almost always, how can we get more sales? What is the ROI on our ad spend? And they're really conversion driven. So these three points are going to be the following. There's always an entry point, which is how do people get to the funnel? There's always a conversion point, which is at what point do they give you money? And then the third point is one that almost everybody overlooks, and that is the retention point. And that is at what point in that funnel do you have them as a customer for life? And I kind of want to break this down because this is a really great way for you to think about funnels if you're just you know, releasing your first product or you're, uh, you maybe release a couple products and you're looking to optimize them or you've never released a product and you really just want to understand what this internet marketing thing is all about. I think this will help you in uh, a very simple way of thinking, okay, all right, I've got my funnel. You know, what, what should I be looking at? Okay, so the first is the entry point. And the entry point's important because it needs to be congruent. So if you're doing, uh, you know, little swipe ups on Instagram and promoting and saying, hey, check out my course, check out my course, right? And your course is a, uh, say, a fitness course, and then they swipe up and, um, and it doesn't talk about fitness, well, you've, you've just messed, out, messed up your entry point. So the way I always think about it is like, you have your funnel, what are all the different ways that we can get people into this funnel? Or if you're not familiar with the funnel concept, to a page, okay, just to, to, to a website. And uh, I started to think, okay, well, what are some creative things we can do? We can do some swipe ups, right? We can do some Instagram posts. We could do some Instagram ads. We can do some Facebook ads. We can create some YouTube videos. We could do some YouTube ads. We can do a referral program. We can do an affiliate program. We can go into some Facebook groups and engage with people there. So there's, uh, you know, we can send out an email, right? So there's a lot of different entry points for the funnel. And my bet is that right now for your funnels, you're not thinking broadly enough as far as all the different entry points that you could have to get people into it. And you're not being aggressive enough on the entry points that you already have in optimizing those. So that's the first thing to think about is kind of how do we get people in and it's kind of the traffic side of the funnel. Uh, the second point is the conversion point. So once they're on the page, at what point do they give us money, right? Like, yeah, we talk about mindset, but we also talk about how do we get real measurable KPI driven results within our businesses so that we can make more money, live a better life and actually have the resources in order to sustain you know, what is a, a cool lifestyle, right? And so that's the conversion point. And here, I want you to think of two different approaches. Approach number one is eliminating the resistance, okay? What, what can we do to make it as easy as possible and as simple as possible for them to buy? So if you're sending them to a landing page and the button's all the way at the bottom, you probably wanna change that. If you're sending them to a page and it's not clear what the offer is or it's confusing, you probably wanna change that. If you're sending them to a page that should have a video that doesn't have a video, you probably want to make a video. If you're sending them to a page that doesn't have testimonials or the button's not big enough or there's all these barriers to them buying, what you need to do is start thinking, rather than thinking, how can I add more stuff to the page? Um, I want you guys to actually think for, for at least for the sake of this video on how can I take stuff out? What is the simplest page like? Like what if we just had a page with just a headline, a video, a button, and then a short explanation? would that maybe outperform a really long page with a bunch of copy? And again, that's something you're gonna to have to test. We do find that long form outperforms if it's done well. Uh, so the way I think of it, it's like, if you have a river and you have a bunch of rocks in the river, if you took out all the rocks, the, the river would flow much, much better, okay? So that's, that's the first way of thinking of the conversion point. And then the second way of thinking about it is actually what I'm gonna call, what is, the, um, what is the moment where they go over the hill? Okay, and this we're talking psychology. So what moment do they convince themselves to buy? 
This is really, really important for you to understand because if you're if you've got all these entry points into your funnel, right? And you just have a you just have a simple page and it's just like headline plus three bullets plus button, right? Plus a, a short video that that kind of explains it, but not really. Um, you're not guiding them psychologically. You might be making it easy for them to buy, but you're not guiding them psychologically to that moment when they have convinced themselves to make the purchase, right? Because whenever you uh, like think of any expensive thing that you've bought, you had a psychological process where you had to say, you know what? Okay, this is expensive, but it's going to be worth it. And you found a way to convince yourself that it was worth the money. So with every single thing that you are selling online, you want to make sure you guide them to that process. And I'll give you an example. Uh, let's say they hit the page and you know, th there's a headline there. Like, okay, that's a very clear headline. I understand what the offer is. And then there's a video. And all of a sudden, it's, this video is, is beautiful. It explains the who they're getting the offer from. It explains what the offer is. It explains all the benefits. It has testimonials. It has social proof. It really breaks down all the benefits that they're going to get when they get it. They're like, wow, this looks really great. Um, and then they keep scrolling, right? And they keep scrolling and they see, you know, the breakdowns of everything they get. They see the explanations. They see the, the case studies. Then, then they, they scroll down and then there's video testimonials of other people, you know, uh, vouching for the program. And there's a point where they go and they go and they go and maybe then they, boom, they see the guarantee. Okay. And again, this is important to understand because there is a point when they've, they've said yes. It's a default no until they've said yes. Unless you have a crazy huge brand, your default state is going to be no, 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 I will not buy from you. And your entire job is to clear the field, allow them to go down the slide, and then uh, guide them to the yes. It's really that simple. And the way that you do that is again through beautiful sales copy, through elegant design, through um, UX that is elegant and responsive and not confusing. Um, and that makes sense, right? Just like when you pick up a phone, uh, you know what to do. There's no manual. Like the, the, an iPhone doesn't come with a manual for a reason. And so you want your sales process, your conversion process to have that same level of congruency, of smoothness to it. Okay. So again, entry point and then conversion point, you want to do two things. You want to eliminate any blocks and make it as easy as possible. And number two is figure out what that point is when they're going to say yes and guide them to it. And then, then, then they bought, right? And that's where most marketers stop. And that's why I had to create this video because I had like hundreds of these conversations and almost, uh, I'd say of the, like the hundreds of conversations, maybe 10 people brought this second, this, this third point up of what is the retention point? So really picture this. Somebody, somebody saw your, your swipe up, right? You, you did your swipe up and they saw the swipe up and then they went to your page and then they bought your thing and then nothing happens. Okay. How does that make them feel? What, what's the effect that that has on their psychology where they see your swipe up again? It might've been a great piece of content. It might've been a great little product, but they don't feel like that relationship got strengthened by the dollars that they invest in. So the way I want you to think that retention point is how can the money that they've spent on that product or service be used as an investment in their relationship with you? Okay. So rather than how uh, the average person I think thinks like, if somebody spent $47, then they bought a product, right? That's, that's the most common way of thinking. It's very transactional. But the way that I recommend that you think, and if you really want to go above and beyond and outperform everybody, is that $47 is an investment that they are making into their relationship with me. It's like if you take somebody out to dinner, right? If you have an important client and you go and you take them out to dinner, that dinner is an investment. It's a conscious decision for you to make an investment into your relationship with that client. Vice versa, if somebody wants to work with you and they take you out to dinner, you, you understand that it's a conscious decision. So every single client that you have that buys through that conversion point, that second point that we talked about, is making an investment. They're taking you to lunch. And that's the way I want you to think about that. Every single time you get a sale, it's if you know Jimmy and Billy and Susie, they just bought you lunch. And, and when you approach it that way, it becomes a lot more human. It becomes a lot more powerful because then you start thinking, what is my retention point? And the way that I uh, define the retention point is when do I know I have them for life? When do I know that this person, when they are uh, in a different room without me present in a different city, that uh, they are going to be a brand ambassador and they are going to support the brand and they're going to promote the brand and uh, say good things. And additionally, at what point is it that anything we pitch them, they'll just buy it. They'll just buy it. Okay. That is 
the difference between you having to fight and claw for every piece of traffic that you get versus you having a real powerful brand that then sustains itself. Because not only are you able to get people in, not only are you able to get them to convert, but you're thinking above and beyond. You're thinking, how can I use this relationship that I have with the client to make this a wow effect, a wow experience, an experience unlike any other that they've had with a personal connection that then allows them to say, you know, that was the best decision I've ever made because as soon as they've wired that in, as soon as they've wired in, that was the best decision they ever made. As soon as you allow them the ability to make that decision again, they will do it and then they will refer you traffic for free. They'll refer you leads for free because they are that bought in. And that is what I really want you to get out of this video is that it's not just about the traffic and the conversions. It's about traffic, it's conversions, and then that retention point. And I want you to ask yourself of the people that maybe you've already sold, if you already have a product, have you done justice in reaching out to them and finding out why they bought, finding out why they took the program or didn't take the program, finding out why they finished or didn't finish the program, finding out what results they actually got in their life as a result of taking that action. It's huge. This is something that we do more than almost anybody else within our mentoring program because I stand behind the success of my students in that program. And so if something's not working for one student, there's a good chance it's not working for other students. And then we take a look at that and we say, well, we've got X amount of students in this program. And for seven of you, it's not working. But then you have three other students that said, no, that worked excellent. And then we start to look at the implementation, at the execution, at the gaps. What is it that makes it work for three people and not work for seven people? And what can we do to make it work for seven people and not work for three or work for all 10? What are those missing elements? Because at that point, what happens is those students look at that and they go, wow, that's commitment. That's a journey. That is dedication to success. That is a true commitment to results. It's not just a digital thing. It's not just something that you push out there and then you leave them out to dry. Okay. So I recommend you do the same thing. Obviously, if you haven't checked out our mentoring program, we're going to include a link down below this video. It is a no brainer to get it. If you can afford it, uh, spots are limited. We don't allow everybody in, but, um, if the link is still up, that means there's still a couple spots and I recommend you fill out the form on there. You talk to uh, myself or one of our project managers and see if it's a good fit for you because there's, there's honestly no other program like it. It's 12 weeks of just everything you want to learn about digital marketing. If you, if you liked this video and you want to learn how to build funnels, how to create digital products, how to chip away at that nine to five so that eventually you can like actually live your life on your terms. Like, like we teach, um, that's the, the true tested program that we run for that. And I'm really, really proud of it. Um, I'm kind of not really doing it justice on pitching it because again, it's meant to be a fun video to help you understand how to think about funnels. It's not really meant to be a pitch, but I do recommend it. Check it out. So, um, again, in this video, we talked about three points of funnel, the entry point, the conversion point, the retention point, and how to think about that. So any funnel that you have, or if you've never built a funnel, there's a great way to think about how to build your first funnel. So how do people get in? When do people buy? Are we making it easy for them to buy? And are we covering all the objections that they need? And what are we doing after they buy to make sure that they want to buy from us again? Because that little bit of investment on the back end is going to reap tons of rewards for you, tons of rewards for you on the back end. Because once you've gotten somebody to buy once, it's a lot easier to get them to buy again than to get somebody new to buy for the first time. Okay. So thank you for taking time to watch this video. Hopefully you found it helpful. This has been Hustle System. As always, my name is Mikhail. I help people master their mindset, build a better business, and help you live your life on your terms. In this video, we talked about the three steps to any funnel. If you enjoyed it, like it, comment down below. What did you like about it? What is something unique that you do with your customers that builds that relationship? Comment that down below. As always, got lots of love for you. I appreciate you. I will see you in the next one.